Hi, I'm going to talk about the things that is happening around us relating to AI. If you look at the applications, the devices, and uh, the layers of uh, connections, right? So I'll talk about, and this artificial intelligence uh, that we are right now seeing, the applications that we are seeing, it goes back to the, uh, the famous statement made by Alan Turing, can really machines think? So he started his paper, I propose to consider a question, can machines really think? The applications that we see today in our day-to-day -day life, like Siri, Google Maps, or any other applications that we see, at least it uses some layers of AI in it. What are those AI elements? What is AI? Uh, it is a study of uh, intelligent agents. We, uh, who are those intelligent agents? The intelligent agents are basically a computer program or a robot or a combination of both. So those intelligent agents, they talk to each other. And what is the language? The language is a, a, it's just about programming. How do you connect different layers through programming so that they can talk to each other? If you look at the applications, at least we interact with 10 devices or applications in our day-to-day -day life that has these AI layers, that has these AI implementations. Now, what is happening around us? The AI which we are talking about, the intelligent agents that we are talking about, those intelligent agents can be a single agent or it can be a multi-agent. Who are those single agents? The agent or the intelligent agent, it perceives the environment and it reacts to maximize the goal, to maximize the objective, right? And the objective can be, it can be a classification, it can be a prediction, it can be some degree of recommendation. So the AI applications, the artificial intelligent applications, they try to recognize the target. The target can be again a classification, prediction or recommendation system. And how do they do it? We train the intelligent agents or we train the AI agents. To start with, it has two different layers, the machine learning layer and the deep learning layer. If we talk about the machine learning, it is a study of a certain task. It is a study of a certain task and by making the agent learn from experiences. So any machine learning system, it uses the examples, the experiences, it trains the learning algorithms to predict or classify the target. Hence, a learning system, if it improves over time by learning new experiences, new examples, that becomes intelligent over time, that is your machine learning system. And deep learning is going to be like a very specific function or very specific uh, usage of machine learning. Why? Because your deep learning layer contains various layers, intermediate layers, to reach the final stage. To reach the final stage, it uses different layers. And those layers, they use transfer functions to connect one layer to the other layer. Now, with this, the changes that is happening around us, three things very important. The input, what is the input to my learning algorithm? What is the output that I'm trying to achieve? The output that I'm trying to achieve can be uh, some classification system, maybe identifying the cancerous and non-cancerous tumors, or it can be predicting uh, what is likely to happen, uh, my sales or revenue, etc. So the target function could be a classification or prediction system. However, the input data can be different. The input data comes from various applications, structured, unstructured, semi-structured, different kinds of input data you will have. If you have images, it, it needs a separate kind of processing and pre-processing to arrive at a training data set so that you can train your learning algorithms on it and you can achieve a task. One specific example, suppose you have images of dogs and you have a cat, you have to identify the cat out of a bunch of dogs. How do you train the intelligent agent or the machine to classify this particular cat out of the bunch of dogs? So you have to translate the images to pixels. So pixels are basically your input data. 
Now from pixels, how do you classify the cat is a cat or the dog is a dog? So it's about identifying and training the learning algorithms to identify the target function. Hence, the learning algorithms are very important. It depends on your response time. It depends on the target you are trying to achieve, right? And these learning algorithms sometimes scale, sometimes don't. So how do you experiment or how do you make an arrangement for identifying the target function? We humans, we learn by making mistakes, by encountering changes, by taking experiences or examples. Similarly, exactly the same way we can train the machines to learn. The machines learn from input data and again various examples. You give many examples of dogs, then it will classify whether a dog is a dog or a cat is a cat. So the learning is a function of repetitive practice and the learning is also a function of you have examples, examples or experiences. Now if you have many examples or many experiences, you will have a better system in terms of classifying or predicting tasks. The applications that we see today or the devices that we see today, these are basically around four different core areas. What are those four core areas? Robotic process automation, building expert systems, identifying complex behaviors, complex relationships in a data set, and the natural language processing. All the AI applications, at least they have a layer of natural language understanding. And if you look at the AI applications, you'll also find the reinforcement learning layers. What is this reinforcement learning? How I can train my intelligent agent by applying this reinforcement learning, right? Now, if you look at the AI applications today, what is this robotic process automation? If that is a repetitive task someone has to do every day, can I train the intelligent agent? As I said, the intelligent agent can be a computer program or it can be a robot. Now, if I train the robot to do that task repetitively, because it's a rule-driven system, you have set up rules, you tell that, okay, this is this, this happens, then you do this. Now, when you train the machine or when you train the robot in performing those activities for you, now what will happen is that, so it removes human elements here in terms of classifying or predicting things. So this is about your building complex uh, or understanding complex relations in AI applications to build classifications or regression systems or prediction systems. Now, if you look at the natural language understanding, almost all the businesses that you see today, they have a digital presence. They are available on Facebook, they are available on Twitter, they are available on other social media platforms. When they have digital exposure, they are getting text in terms of reviews, comments, feedbacks. Now, who is going to analyze those things? Now, human beings, it is very difficult. Now, suppose I get a review of 150 million reviews from one application, how do I analyze? Can I have a team of 100 people to look at the comments and analyze this? This is very difficult. But if I look at the program, so can I have one AI agent or a computer program or any algorithm that looks at all those reviews, summarizes this, creates summary tables, like what people are talking about? Is, this, is it positive or is it negative? Can I have some kind of sentiment mining on this? Can I do some kind of sentiment analysis to understand the user's uh, experiences or user's behavior better? Of course, yes. So that's where the, to understand the data better, to understand the unstructured data, we can train the machine learning algorithms or deep learning algorithms to extract insights from textual data. Now that is the study of natural language understanding. Now this natural language understanding, it has two aspects, natural language processing and natural language generation. Now if you look at, uh, like tweets are generated by robots. That's part of your natural language generation. You feed a bunch of tweets, you want the system to create something new which is different from whatever existing. So it generates tweet for you. Similarly, if you look at the articles, the blogs, like some bloggers, they find a very common issue like plagiarism issue. Can I train one intelligent robot or, a, or an application or can I uh, train the algorithm to generate some text for me so that it is content, this content is plagiarism free and which is also meaningful to the users? Of course, yes. 
Now that is happening, this, this kind of changes the natural language process and natural language generation helps us in extracting insights from textual data as well as making sense of text. Now if you look at the export system, the export system is about rule driven system like personal digital assistance. Every day, I mean, we have so many user IDs and passwords. Google ID, user ID, password, then Facebook user ID, password. It's very difficult to manage your passwords. Sometimes we always keep on saying that, okay, forget password. You get it, uh, OTP, then you generate another kind of password, etc. But can I have a personal digital assistant? If I ask, what is my password for Google? What is my password for Facebook? And that personal digital assistant is personal to me. I'll feed my training data set to the personal digital assistant. I can create one digital assistant here. So that's, that's how the change is happening around us. And this is how we are moving towards the AI world. Now, if I look at one specific example relating to the healthcare industry here, how AI is revolutionizing this particular industry as well as other associated industries. If you look at this example, the fitness trackers are the smart watches that we use today typical the variables that we use today. Now this is generating massive amounts of user data. If you look at the uh, companies who manufacture those devices, they gather a lot of information from various users, walking, sleeping, to, uh, maybe uh, activities. So all the activities are getting stored. They have established metrics. Suppose an, 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 adult, an adult person should uh, sleep more than let's say seven to nine hours, that's a metric. Now, if you are deviating from the metric, it gives you custom recommendations saying that, hey, your sleep pattern is not according to the norms. So to feel healthy, you have to sleep more. This kind of recommendations you are getting, and that is only possible when you have data. You have massive amounts of user data from different areas, from different uh, fields, from different countries, etc. So the devices market is going to bring another revolution like smartphone. Smartphone, we have seen, it has already penetrated and it's saturated. But if you look at the devices market, it's just picking up. You is, you'll be seeing now many more sensors that will be integrated in the devices, in the wearables. That is likely to happen. How this is going to change the other industries? If you look at one particular example of insurance industry, the risk profiling that we do at the time of taking policy, we'll attend a healthcare checkup, complete healthcare checkup. That's done. But we don't do any kind of further check, right? And insurance companies, they will assess your health or profile. They will not take into account your activities, your habits, your patterns, right? Now, if I have a devices data and there is some kind of data sharing that happens, if that happens in future, I'm not sure. If that happens in future, the insurance companies will have access to this Fitbit's data or smartwatches data so that they can make better pricing. People who are doing more activities, they're deemed to be fit, so that they deserve a differential pricing. We can't treat them like risk profiles, right? So this kind of insurance uh, uh, revolution is going to come in future. Now, personalized medicine, healthcare, all the industries associated with health that is likely to change. Now this is, like few sensors integrated in future, temperature, motion sensors, all those sensors will come and gradually the Fitbits and smartwatches is going to change. Now that is happening in, uh, like it, it's likely to happen very soon. Now, along with this, this is just an example that is what is likely to happen. Now, the changes that we are seeing here, the robotic process automation or like uh, the job loss is likely to happen. So there is, uh, there is a, a thinking amongst the professionals that we are going to lose our job in future because of massive automation, machine learning, and AI. But I would, I would not agree with that because the AI will create more jobs than it eliminates. Why? Because we'll be doing more or better jobs than what we used to do. If you look at one example of looking at the text and making inferences, looking at the text and understanding what the user is saying. We, we used to do it manually, but now you have a program, you write a program to classify or to say that what is the text it hidden in this. The AI will bring more jobs than it eliminates. So that's the message. Now, 
If that's, that is likely to happen, then how do we address this? The AI will bring more changes to us. It makes us smarter in doing whatever we do in our day-to-day -day job. It makes us feel better because once we track our activities, we'll, do, we'll, we'll change our course of action if we are not in the right path. If we are in the right path, of course, yes, we'll feel healthier and better. Now, this will also make us more efficient in managing our tasks. This will make us more productive in doing the task that we are doing in our day-to-day -day work. That's likely to happen. So certainly the AI is not going to remove the jobs because we will be reskilled and we will be going to another altitude where we'll be doing a better job rather than uh, doing the job that we are doing right now. Given this context, how do I start a career or how do I begin the journey in the AI and ML space? The first step is about stay connected. Stay connected with the changes that is happening around us. Suppose, first thing is build your domain expertise. I'm working in insurance, he's working in healthcare, banking, retail, whichever industry you are working on. Build your domain expertise. Look at the changes happening in that area. Follow few people in that particular industry in various social media platforms, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and look at what they're sharing. What changes coming in that field? What are the new metrics? What is new coming up? How they're solving the existing use cases? How they're solving the new use cases? Or how they're applying those algorithms to solve the old use cases? Because right now, the professionals or the leaders in those industries, they share their information, they share their work, in, in, because it's open. You, you have access to their work. So stay connected. Next, fast. Act fast. So yesterday it was tensor flow. Now it is tensor force. Tomorrow I don't know. Maybe tomorrow something new comes up. So act fast. You look at one technology coming, create a prototype, act fast, and experiment, build a prototype, and see what it can do, what it cannot do. Do a benchmarking with the existing technologies, do a benchmarking with existing setup, how it is classifying or predicting things. When we uh, use like uh, online form to check the eligibility for a loan, we put the details and we see click submit. You are eligible or you are not eligible. Now in that case, you feel that okay, I'm eligible, but the algo says that you are not eligible. Now can I have a reinforcement layer on top of this? I'll say the algo is not right. Can you correct it? Now here comes feedback. The feedback plays a very important role in all, uh, your, all of your classification systems or prediction systems. If your prediction or classification is not right, you ask the user to rate yourself whether it is good, bad, or it is working or not working. If it is a good response, good classification, it goes as a reward to the algo. If it is a bad classification, it goes as a penalty to the algo to improve it further in future. And that's how feedback plays a very important role. Once you have done all those things, the last step is about improving the performance. Here comes the role of optimization. So what kind of optimization you will train? There are different algorithms to train, or different uh, algos uh, you can use to improve the performance of your uh, AI system. So overall, the AI is going to make us more smarter, healthier, better, and this is definitely going to uh, revolutionize all the industries that we see today. And this will make us more efficient in whatever we do. Thank you.